On Valentine's Day, 2022, Belfast Academy came to the New City Gallery to find inspiration and to look at the artworks on show. And we were really lucky that five or six artists were here to talk about their works. And I must say, it was an incredible afternoon. I'm a street artist and uh, so most of my work's on the wall and the street and often it doesn't last very long and we just get photos of it but I got a little bit frustrated with having to lose work all the time so I took the skills that I'd learned using a spray can and started putting them on canvas a few years ago. I've been around for a while I've done a lot of different projects with a lot of different people. But as I say, most of it is lost, gone forever. Uh, painted over with tags or other graffiti and that. So it's nice to be in a, in a gallery environment. It's quite, um, it's quite new to me to do pieces and, be, and put them in galleries. Normally the gallery is, uh, the street is my gallery. Um, you may have seen my work in, um, at, around South End on the walls under the railway bridge and uh, in the town centre. I've done That's a lot of youth work projects in that. Oh yeah, in the, in the car park, yeah, yeah David That's Attenborough. Amazing. I did a, a, a painting of David Attenborough. It's big, it's in the car park at, um, at Clarence Road. I helped to organise that street art festival and we have another one coming up in September of this year where there'll be loads of opportunities for you guys to see street art, like street artists working live and um, doing big murals and that. So uh, I hope that you have some questions for me because uh, I'm running out of things to say. That's one of these years. So when you use the spray paint, all of my paintings, it's all spray paint. There's no, like, like there's, a, there's a detail on this one where I've used a, a paint pen, but all the rest of it is spray paint coming out at various speeds and, uh, and uh, like squirts. Um, but every color is a different can. So, so if you paint normally like with brushes, like you can mix colors and that, but obviously with spray cans, you have to have every different shade of color. You can't really get different colors like mixing and that. Um, so the number of cans I use is equal to the number of colors on there. I don't know, <laughs> it's a difficult question to ask. Can you, uh, you all self talk? Yeah, I mean, so I picked up a spray can when I was little because I was influenced by all the kids that were a few years older than me when I was little, they were all doing graffiti and that. And then when I found out what the graffiti tags were and that they were doing them in spray paint and that the graffiti tags and the scribbles often were just the precursor to the big mural work, like I started trying to learn from about 12 really. And then I did go, I, I did all right at school. I, I did art and got an A at GCSE and and I went to art college as well. And then I went to uni and did like a, a graphic design degree. Um, but no one taught me throughout that. It was, a, it was a long time ago and street art was different then. People called it graffiti and it was frowned upon and not even at art college, they wanted to know. At school, they, they didn't want to know. They thought that graffiti art was just, or people just copying each other and that it was going to get me in trouble. So yeah, I'm, so, I'm self-taught. I've learned from my peers, my friends that do it, and uh, just persevering and trying new things. I think trying new things is a really important thing. Like, like when you're painted like, with spray cans for as long as I have, unless you're pushing the boundaries of what you can do, like, and like attempting projects that you think you might fail at, or doing things that you know are going to be difficult then you're wasting your time because your work will just always be you'll just be churning out the same old stuff and a lot of artists i know they they do that they stay in their comfort zone spray paint allows you to work fast because it dries quickly and generally from experience you need to get it done and get out of there yeah so most of my paintings <laughs> including these ones will take a session a day like i'll try to do it all in one go because like, I'm used to not being able to come back to visit a piece because it might be gone, scribbled over or damaged. So I work quite quickly. You have to make quite um, uh, uh, 
confident marks with a spray can anyway. Um, but yeah, it, that's one of the reasons why I'm doing gallery stuff now and putting pieces on canvas and that because there's no respect on the street. Do you ever collaborate with any other artists? Yes, collaborating with other artists is a good is a good thing to bring up because, as I say, I I wouldn't have learned I wouldn't be where I was today without the help of my peers, my the people that I would go out painting with. We would learn techniques. We would learn places where we could get away with it. So it's really important to collaborate with other artists. And all of this, uh, uh, I call this the glitch aesthetic. All these paintings are based on like a glitch aesthetic, which is a, like when you have a corrupted image file, yeah? And I was um, working at the First Sight Gallery in Colchester with a bunch of guys who were doing, um, they were doing just that. They were taking the line of code, which is an image, taking sections of it out, reopening it, and it was glitching and it was corrupted imagery. But it was interesting, so we, we painted a few of the uh, the glitches, the corrupted images, and uh, yeah, so out of collaboration, I sort of, um, yeah, it steered me in, in, in new directions. So collaborate with other artists, be in places where other artists are, don't be afraid to try new stuff, you know? Push the boundaries, don't stay in your comfort zones. Is More you questions? How you scan that from your picture to a massive side? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, like so nowadays you can use apps on your phones like Doodle Grid and whatnot. Yeah, like so you can just take a picture and make it transparent on your phone and it will show you where to go. I haven't done that yet. Like I use a traditional method. Like so, I, like I, I painted a piece at the weekend. It was thirty foot long, so I took a piece of A4 paper. Like I drew the squares on it, that they match with the squares that I drew on the on the wall, and then I just scale it up like that. You've all done it. It's one of the first lessons in art. You just draw like squares, small squares on your small picture, big squares on the wall, fill in the squares. That's how I did the David Attenborough one, because it was so big that you know when you're out next to it and up a big machine against the wall, you can't see really. So you're just looking at a square on a picture and knowing that this square's got a like a quarter of a nostril in it or whatever so you you've got to work like that it, it's quite difficult but you you get used to it yeah no more questions all right cool now i made these about a year ago uh, I, I do interior design i'm an artist as well and i thought i wanted to make what i call art shelves so there's a paint effect on them and then i did what you call asymmetrical so the they're all obviously on one side. And then I went to Belfair's Woods and I gently nicked one of these branches to put in a support. There, there's a canvas. This one's meant to sort of give an idea of the sea, sort of the colours of the seafront. This one is more of a Japanese design. So it's good if people collect things, they can display them, whatever they have, you know. I've got another one which is green and it's like, um, Angry fairies and things like that. Arthur Rackham's the artist. So if any people like collect things, you can, and you can have lights underneath, and then it's a good display area, sort of thing. But it's making just strips of wood, cutting sections out, interlocking them, and fix them all together. So because there's no support there, you think it'll just fall down, and then you add whatever colours you want, and you pour the paint on. So it's acrylic paint or like poster paints mixed with water, mixed with PVA, and then you have loads of different, whatever colours you have, you have loads of little cups in them. And some of them you pour in silicon uh, spray, which reacts to the water, and that creates all these bubbles and different textures, and, it, and it's really thick. And you, you can put it over sheets of canvas or wood or boards, and you literally pour it it's like it's like custard but in paint art can be anything art can be pottery traditionally paintings ceramics photography filmmaking art is art if you do art you come from art even if you mess around with your dinner when you can't be bothered to eat it properly it probably looks like a nice abstract piece of art but you do it without even realizing so that was quick sort of thing is there any questions do it take long to make Oh, good point. I, um, I, I cut them all by hand, so they probably took two hours to make each one. And, but then you sort of cut lots of pieces and then you get all the paints together and you do three or four at a time. 
And then I've, I've got some other pieces with twisted words, natural leaves growing, so it can also be a living, a living piece of the thing. And then I've done another one, it's not here, similar as a coat stand. So I did a painting of a woodland scene and a canopy over it, and it screws to the wall like it's hanging, floating. And then all these different copets and that for coats and bits and pieces. So like, if you ever do anything like this, you can incorporate it in your own way, you can make it your own version, your own colours, theme, things that you like, things that you may enjoy. And, uh, and then you might make it and then leave it in your dad's shed and never touch it again. Or you may put it on the wall and put your favourite things on it. Just don't be afraid to try different things rather than traditional photography or uh, an oil or watercolour or, or acrylic painting sort of thing. Don't be afraid to accept, experiment and mix and match. Try and do different things rather than just, you know, what you basically do at art in school. You might. You might think, oh, we've got to do still life. I'm fed up with doing still life. And then I say, I want to do something different. And as you know, students at uni, we still have what you paint in
my name's Dennis Thompson. Um, this is my crime scene. Uh, the title of this is Exhibit. Uh, the images that you see, there are 72 in total, and they were all uh, made as exhibits, as, as you would expect in an art gallery like this, but also uh, it's a bit of a play on words, so it's exhibits in a court case, like you would have the murder weapon would be exhibit A and so on. So it's just a bit of a play on words. Now, um, this guy here is actually me, and uh, when we set this up, Nikki started the taping for me, and uh, I finished it off. And there's a time-lapse video on, um, on the Facebook group, and it shows you um, all of this being put up, and it took about two and a half, three hours, and it looks really cool on the time-lapse, so that's, that's worth a look. Um, so the idea is that there are different things that killed this guy, killed the artist. Uh, there's bad food, uh, there are possibly sharks or dangerous flapping birds like Alfred Hitchcock's for birds. We've got, uh, there's drinks, cigarettes, uh, lots of other things to see here. There's witnesses and onlookers. Um, it's basically all of my photos that I've made over those years put together in one thing and like Scotty was saying you've really got to kind of if you push your boundaries and when you're feeling uncomfortable that's sometimes when you're in the right place because I actually said to Nikki look maybe I shouldn't do this there's other artists might want to use the space and I wasn't really prepared or didn't know exactly what I was going to do here so uh, now I've done it I'm so pleased with it and uh, it's, it's a nice diversion maybe from like the beautiful artwork and stuff, something a little bit different to look at. But I'll show you very quickly how I made some of these images, because if you look up close, every image has been destroyed in some way. So you've got tear marks, uh, and there might be paper clips or sellotape or staples holding them together before I take another photograph. So I've taken what can be, it might be a pretty boring photograph like this, and I mean it's nice colour but it's pretty boring but I'm going to try and turn it into something a little bit more interesting for us to look at. Now I haven't got a big screen so I'll be doing it on the laptop but I'll just show you the very basics of what I would do. So this one I'm hoping like now there the tear you can actually see the tear I didn't want it to be too like a, a scissor cut so when we take the photo we'll see that tear. So those kind of little details of what I'm what I'm looking at Okay, so this is actually quite good. I've not practiced on this one before. This is just one of my old photos that I had handy. So I'm going to put some staples in there. And now uh, the equipment I use, it's an SLR camera. You could do this just as easily on an iPhone or, or Android phone. Uh, the most important thing is that you get a sharp image, so that the image needs to be as sharp as possible. Could you hold that for a moment? And I've got no plan, so I don't actually know what I'm doing here, I'm freestyling with it. But I just want to get, and I don't want the sellotape on there perfectly, I want it so that it's a bit scrunched up, and so that it shows in the final image. And also I'm going to bend this up a bit because I want some shadow, when that's laying on the, on the paper here, I want a bit of shadow. So, if I put that down there, I'm going to drop a couple of staples on there. And these are the kind of things that I want people to initially look at and think, oh, it's a, a bit of grass. But then when they look again and they notice these tiny details and real, realise it's been put back together. So, uh, let's take a picture of that. Right, so... Once I've taken a photo, like I say, this can be any, any kind of camera you like. I haven't got Wi-Fi on this camera, so I'm going as quick as I can to get the SD card out, okay? Uh, the most important thing, like I said, is the sharpness. So this lens, it's a 50mm lens. It's one of the cheapest lenses you can get, but it is really, really sharp. The staple is nice and sharp, and the, the rips... Do you, do you use uh, mobile phones and SLRs and a mixture of cameras? It's more, it's more stuffy shoots, but I think, I know, am I right in saying it's your phones, isn't it? Yeah. 
yeah, they do a lot of work, but obviously they do lots of editing and their editing skills are really, really good. You learn about rule of thirds and all the different um, techniques and golden triangles, so it's great to know that, but sometimes if you can just then mix it up and do your own thing and just try things out, and sometimes it's rubbish, but at least you've tried it, you know. Okay, so there you go, that is, uh, I'm quite pleased with that. In fact, I'm going to use that if I ever do another exhibition, I think. So, yeah, if I just grab this, this is my daughter. She's been doing a great job of um, filming everyone today. So, but you can have a closer look at that if you like. So, how are some other ways that you've exhibited your work? Because this is like a collection of different things. Yeah, so uh, what I've done previously is with the 10 by 8 frames, what I would do is uh, put them in collections of 12. That's how I originally envisaged it. Yourself as a commercial photographer, like would you want to be selling your work and things like that? Well, all of do these. Adapt, do you adapt to what you do for like the people that you think that they buy your work? No, no, yeah. mainly because I don't do this yeah. as a profession, yeah. so I'm doing this for myself. And if other people enjoy it, then that's, that means like a huge amount. Mm -hmm. uh, I have sold some things and I had like little commissions and that before. But really, this is for me. This is a total indulgence. This is like my mind and ideas being spilled out. And if you don't like it, it's tough luck. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, but it's worked. So um, everyone likes what's inside my brain at the moment. Yeah, There's uh, lots of like, little tongue-in-cheek bits. And um, the more you look like this is me here, and this is like, a, stapled, a stapled image, but then this is the actual negative mm. that that photo came from. Mm. So it's like there's lots that you can look and then you'll see things from other photos that relate to each other. Uh, this shark, this is actually the original image of a shark and then I added colour to all the others. So it's just one image and that ended up being a whole kind of collection of work in itself. And uh, something else, like this, this bird up here, um, the green bird, that won an award, as well as these seagulls actually. So I've taken things that have done really well in photography competitions and then destroyed them. I've graffitied over them, you know, so I've taken something that is, uh, you know, very pleasing to eye and then done something else to it. And then these ones here, these are, have got burn marks on the edges, all the fire area. Um, so obviously be careful if you are destroying stuff with fire and uh, I would do that outside. Um, and then there's things like there's mayonnaise for bird poo here, there's, uh, there's black currant juice for red wine and on this one uh, ketchup and mayonnaise. So I'm just, I'm using everything, not just for print but liquids, fire, um, anything I can just to give a, a different look to, to the print. Yeah, the idea of taking photos of the photos. Yeah, and I, I do that a lot, photographs of photographs of photographs. Yeah, and I don't know why, it's just something that yeah, yeah, I've ended up doing, yeah, like doing yeah, style. Cool. Right, brilliant. You know, you, you see photo artists and their inspiration and their sort of input. It's brilliant. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Erzsébet Kovács. I have been living in, uh, in this town um, about three years and uh, I can say I very love this, uh, this town. Um, I came from Hungary, so I am Hungarian and uh, my story with art started um, two years ago in March uh, when I was um, uh, unemployed because of uh, Covid. So I can say I uh, can thanks uh, COVID uh, because I can be here now. Uh, and uh, yes, I start to, uh, to paint uh, two years ago, uh, and uh, I just wanted to something creative thing. And uh, I can say the the painting uh, is what I was looking for. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> can you just show us? Just point yeah, to your uh, that is my. Um, three um, paintings, um, that is actually abstract. However, um, as I mentioned that, I very, very love South End and uh, I have a lot of uh, paintings uh, about uh, South End. Uh, the seafront, at the sunrise, um, um, sunset, so uh, yes, I 
Uh, actually, at the moment, I'm just looking for myself in the art. So I don't have own style yet, but maybe later it's going to be happen. Um, yeah, and uh, finally, I can say um, the life is very strange because um, that is the first day when I need to speak English. Um, Public, public, yeah. Another thing is, I forgot something. I, uh, I very, very love to paint because not because of money or something like that. I just uh, very love. Uh, I am feeling uh, under uh, when I paint. Another thing is, I have two adult ch uh, children, and uh, the painting was what uh, helped me to uh, leave them to fly. All right, because uh, it's very uh, uh, hard thing for every mother uh, to leave uh, the children became uh, uh, adult people. So yes, I can say uh, I have two beautiful and smart uh, adult children. <laughs> so yeah. thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Um, so, painting in my spare time, first time I've ever exhibited in anything and I have sold and got positive feedback, so I'm really happy about that. Um, so these two here, I'm very inspired by South End Street as well. These were painted during the lockdown when I used to go, well I still do, save my sanity down the seafront on early morning walks. So this was about four sort of five o'clock, six o'clock in the morning, really um, misty morning, a bit hazy and drizzly, um, just capturing the light. I took some photographs and then painted these from that. They're both on plywood with acrylic and the paint was sponged in, um, just a bit of brushwork on top and the lights created with a little sponge so you could get that diffused effect going out uh, around them. Um, so that's standing on the beach, looking towards the pier, and that one's on the seafront, looking back towards the south end. No one around, just me, very quiet and peaceful. And I'm just hopes that that comes out in the painting, the sort of peace and calm, because that's what I'm always trying to get over in my paintings, is the sort of atmosphere and the, um, that I felt while I was there. Uh, so that's it really, yeah. Any questions? Does anybody relate your work to like any particular famous artists or anything? Do they reference it? Well, they have, they have done, because some of my other work they have done, just they always say, well, I don't know, they say Turner, but yeah. I don't yeah. ever yeah. think that, because yeah. I mean, I love it's like a modern Turner, 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 isn't it? I wish. <laughs> Are these, yeah, are they oil or acrylic? Uh, acrylic. Acrylic. Yeah, I've, I've dabbled in a bit of oils, but... I haven't got a lot of room at home to store things to dry, so acrylic really works for me uh, because it's, you know, dry and works quickly. Um, and then you can store it easily. So I do actually really like the perspective. Um, I wasn't very good at it, and I have made a lot of mistakes in the past, uh, but my dad buys me art books from charity shops. <laughs> and I learned a lot from that because really, you know, in um, all I've, I am self-taught, I've got a, our O level that I got in 1982. So <laughs> from there, um, I just I just play really, play around with it, and do my own thing, no no training whatsoever. So yeah, that's very. Um, I find painting very uh, relaxing. I'm very nervous though by the blank canvas. I don't know how anyone else feels like that when you've not put anything on the page. It, it's a very scary thing to start and a lot of procrastination and um, do you do your backgrounds first yeah what's your layering up like um, so with this process? with this one and, and that one i um i tend to start in the corners and bring it in because i like painting light uh, light on the water natural light or artificial light and, and reflection um but i often feel you need to bring that in sort of dark around the edges so you're sort of going into it um, so I, I sponge the paint on with um, a sponge and because it's on plywood it just really 
worked. I wasn't expecting it. I was just playing around. But it really um, helped make that misty morning effect. Yeah. yeah, so a bit of sponging all around there. Wait for that to dry. And then um, for the rest is just brushwork and, and a bit of sponge. And is this the first time you're exhibiting your work in South End? And have you sold any pieces? Um, it's the first time I've exhibited, yes. So I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled to be here. Because uh, this is, you know, very removed from my normal life. <laughs> um, so I've sold the three tiny ones at the front there. And I've sold this one here. Um, yeah. Congratulations. And the, thank you. <laughs> the tiny hearts are mine as well. That are dotted about. I've sold a few. So you've never exhibited your work before? No, only online with the I mean, South End Art Club because before lockdown two years ago we were going to have an exhibition um, but then obviously that didn't happen so we went online and I did sell one of mine online then as well so yeah but that's, that's the first time I've not sold to family or friends yeah. which is nice I've had good feedback here from other artists and the public which you know it's is, is nice because you just think if it's your family or friends they're just going oh yeah that's lovely yeah. <laughs> it means more when it's outside, yeah it outside. does i mean that's just i appreciate family and friends yeah. um you know buying things or but it's well, yeah it does so sort of validate what you're doing that, and that you're okay yes. at it <laughs> well, thank you Anne. thank you, Anne. Thank you. Thank you. Um, mainly I take pictures of what captures me so I don't often go out with something in mind this isn't my work I'm not, not going to claim that these are my three here and I've got four going down the stairs and the cloud at the bottom of the stairs is mine and the gentleman reading the book just in there is one of mine as well and um, as we all do you want to document uh, your childhood growing up and stuff uh, disposable cameras and things like that when I was growing up but then when my daughter, Yasmin, who's taking photos of you all now, uh, when she was born, I obviously wanted to capture her growing up. Um, so, and iPhone was the most convenient phone, so I was always whipping that out. Um, and uh, it's not always about the equipment. You know, you can produce great images with your smartphones now. So yeah, documenting her, um, her start of her life. She did become uh, resistant to when a photo taken. Um, so I got out into street photography. I love taking abstract pieces as well, uh, portraiture. Uh, like you, I'm a student at the moment as well. I'm studying the British Academy of Photography up in London at the weekends. Um, so I'm doing coursework, I'm doing homework uh, and all that kind of stuff. And um, you know, like I was saying to Anne there about this gallery, this space for, for local artists, most of the people in here have not exhibited their work before. So we're giving opportunities to people who want to create, want to share, and maybe even sell it, you know? So, you know, if you are interested, because we've had Year 11 student, Neve Allen, uh, exhibiting her work in here, you can send uh, images of any work you've done to Nikki, and uh, she'd consider it to be put up in here. The initial um, uh, collaboration with Nikki was her first pop-up uh, gallery around the corner there, which is just simply for photography. And since then, I've been following Nikki and all the work she's doing in South Bend uh, with uh, local creatives and artists. And again, she said about this opportunity, and I, I jumped on it. And I'm really proud to be involved. And it's been great meeting so many other uh, artists uh, and people that are living their dream and, and just doing it. And I encourage you all to just, you know, just express yourselves in. Uh, in however you feel comfortable, whether that's picking up a paintbrush, picking up a camera, like Scotty was saying, doing a spray can, but don't break any laws, please. All right? Um, you know, but just, you know, there is no should in art. That's one of the most important things that I've learned in my journey with immersing myself in photography is there are a lot of rules, yeah? Okay? And those rules are good when you're learning, but they are to be broken. And there isn't a should in art. It shouldn't, it, it, no one can tell you it should be like this or it should be like that. If you're producing work and it, you, know, you feel something from it, somebody else will connect with it as well. So yes, do as Miss Lineker says, okay, all right, and your art teachers, but remember those, uh, those rules, although you learn them and you know them and you play by them, 
break them experiment uh, and that's what I was doing with this image here um, this guy was he was on the underground I was trying to capture him in a great position couldn't get anything he disappeared and um, and then I was just waiting for my train and he appeared on the other side of the platform so I had no idea that that was going to be the image that I now show you it was all in the moment didn't know what I was creating I was just intrigued by him um, here I was stripping my front room to paint it and decorate it in lockdown like a lot of people were doing. Cleared out the room and where there was previously furniture on the floor there, um, the light that was just coming in and the reflection and the shadows of the frames of the windows, again, just really captured me. So straight away, take out my phone, document it, and then here we are. Um, so you never know where something you produce where it can end up and what it can mean to somebody else as well as yourself. Has anyone got any questions? Do you still use the camera phone? Uh, yeah, so um, that picture, that image and that image, they're all on my camera phone. I know my way around the DSLR, I can use manual, etc. But in my course, I'm learning more about lighting and you can see the great work behind you here um, by Ian. Um, and you know he would not be able to do those work those works if it wasn't for lighting and Photoshop skills um, and the thing is whenever you are learning your craft right within art whatever that may be okay there is going to be the technical rabbit hole okay and that is vast with photography and I'm learning that now lenses lighting diffusers um, it's not just about the angle and, and what you choose to put in the frame you know, it's all the different skills that you can acquire through the technology. Um, and I'm just, I'm just really enjoying that journey. So uh, yeah, I'm picking up both smartphone and DSLR. I've got a film camera as well, I shoot with that. Um, but as I say, the best camera is always the one you've got on you. So I, I encourage you to use both to experiment, um, but then whatever you feel most comfortable with, you can use that. But, experiment as well and do push yourself.